this tutorial, we're going to go over how to do commerce categories for your Sweet Commerce website. A commerce category is how you organize items assigned to categories for your website. So let's look at this website. We can see that electronics is a level one commerce category. Laptops and tablets is a level two commerce category and notebooks and tablets are a level three commerce category. Natively, your header navigation goes three levels deep and this, this can automatically be populated when you add new categories to your website. And, and I'll show you that in just a minute here. So on the back end, on the ERP, let's look at this electronics one to start off with. You'll notice that there are subcategories within it and then there's also items that can be assigned on any of these categories. Let's go into the ERP and see what this looks like. We're gonna go to commerce and go over to content management and we're gonna go commerce categories and select the list here. As you can see, there's quite a few commerce categories here. Some of them are not assigned to the specific catalog of the website that we're demoing today. And this one though is this electronics, laptops, notebooks, and, and tablets. Just so we can see how they match up on the website, we're gonna select this electronics category and see the subcategories and the products within it. Going back here, we're gonna click view on the electronics category. And now we can see that there's subcategories assigned, which are linked, and then there are items within it. And we can see that there's 33, approximately 33 here because we can see it on the website here. If you don't have items assigned to a commerce category, then this whole section will not appear entirely and it will just be the list of the commerce categories. There are no images associated to the laptops and tablets, although you can natively have it show up here, but let's look at this laptops and tablets commerce category to see what I'm talking about. So I'm going to go back here, we're going to go to subcategories, click on laptops and tablets, and you'll notice that there is no image that is assigned here. So we're going to change that. Let's go ahead and add a, we'll do a 500 PX by 500 PX image and try and have it show up right next to this laptops and tablets text. So it's more of a tile rather than a text to select the commerce category. Now you can decide what size image it, I am selecting a fairly large image. So let's just go ahead and add it in here and see how it looks and click edit. And let's go ahead and look at the field help because you'll notice that there's a a page banner, an image, thumbnail image. So it says it's gonna be the thumbnail image for this category and that the page banner lets you specify an image file in the file cabinet that can dis be displayed as the banner on the category page of an SCA site. So these are two different things. The banner is talking about this electronics category. It would have a, it, you could select the image that would be a full width banner and then it would show the commerce category thumbnails underneath of it. So let's go ahead and select. There we go. It is, we're going to use this image. And we're going to click save. Let's go ahead and do a control shift R or just select the category here. And now you can see that this laptops and tablets thumbnail has an image here that's a tile for you to select on. As you add additional thumbnails, it'll fill up the space and be much more user friendly for them to be able to click in further into the commerce categories. This is a good example because if we look at laptops and tablets, if you did have any items assigned, you would, sh you would see the items come up below these commerce categories, these subcategories. Now let's go ahead and add onto our commerce category. Let's go ahead and add a page banner. I want to add a new image for me to use on this electronics page. And we're going to add it in the page banner, but we need to go into the file cabinet, file cabinet. We're going to go to website hosting files, live hosting files, and let's just throw it right in here. Now we just put in this image directly into this folder. We're gonna test this image from this live 
hosting folder. You can create other folders as well if you want. Go back to the commerce category. We're going to need to just refresh this because we added it to the file cabinet just now. And then we're going to look for, it's called page banner, the image file. And we are going to go ahead and save this. Let's go back to this electronics tab. We're going to do a control shift R. Now we're going to see this is the page banner of the electronics category. And this is the thumbnail down here that we added of the laptops and tablets subcategory. So that's the difference between those different fields on the commerce category. So let's look at some of the other fields here to make sure that we've got all the data in here as they should be. You should always have a good descriptive name. You should have a good description. And then the page title, similar to an item record, the page title is what shows up here in the tab where it says electronics. By default, it takes the name of electronics category and puts it in the, the tab up here. But let's say we want those to be different. So we're going to say electronics Christmas sale vertical line and we're going to say anchor group and then we're going to say this is a description we're going to put in a heading say this is a heading and we're going to put in the meta keywords this is what shows up when google finds our cat commerce category and shows the description within the google search results an item record requires you to have a little bit of HTML. This does not ha have that requirement. Um, sorry, I'm talking about the meta description. So we're going to say this is a test meta description for electronics. And we'll show how that shows in a little bit. We can modify the URL, to the fragment here. This is similar to the URL component on the item record. So let's go ahead and see this. See how it says that whatever the URL is slash the URL component or or in this case the URL fragment so we can change that if you've already created it and change it after the fact make sure again similar to an item record that you create a redirect and if you want you can add meta keywords so we can say this is a meta keyword for electronics you can decide when you want commerce categories to show and disappear. This is really useful for if you have a sale category that you want to display on the website, maybe at a certain day or time, and then have it disappear that category from the website. You can set that here. You can also work with this via the site management tools as well. And then finally, similar to an item record, you can display in website this category or have it not display on the website. And that selection will determine whether that commerce category is shown on the website. Let's go ahead and just save the record and look at all the changes. You can go to the website, do Control Shift R. And while that loads, I'm gonna go ahead and click view of the electronics so that we have something to compare against. All right, here we go. Now we have, this is the heading. This is a description. So we've got the heading and the description of the commerce category. And of course, with some theme development, you can reposition that, surface it wherever you want, restyle it and the look and feel. This is just the, the default location on the, on the base theme. And then we see that the name is electronics, but let's look at the page title. So the name of this category is electronics and if we look up here it says electronic christmas sale anchor group okay so we've got the name of the category electronics right here the heading the description and then the page title and we've got the page banner and when you have a thumbnail on the commerce category, it shows up like this if the commerce category is a subcategory. So we've gone through a few of those elements. Now let's look at the meta description. In order to look at this, we're going to click F12 on the keyboard and we're going to look at the elements tab and then 
look in the header, and as we look through here, you'll see right here the category says, this is a test meta description for electronics. And then right here is, this is a meta keyword for electronics. And that's where this information goes. This is primarily for, for Google to look at for your, your, your Google listing. But it's an important element to your commerce category, so I always want to bring it up. Let's go ahead and click Edit and talk about adding additional subcategories and additional items. We can add whatever items we want to here. For this case, let's go ahead and add that item, the XLR Precision Circular Saw. We're going to add it to this category. And I'm just going to drag and drop it right up here to the second spot. And we're going to save. Now we're going to go to this commerce category, control shift R. All right. And you'll notice that the sort matters. So even though I move the position of that particular item to that second slot, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be in the second slot because we have default sorting. And that is truly how this shows up on the page. So in order to move it correctly, it has to be sorted correctly. I mentioned this before and I'm on, when we talked about the item record and one over item record data management, you cannot select the commerce category that the item should get assigned to directly from the item record. You always have to come into the commerce category. And let's say you're assigning in bulk a lot of items to a lot of different commerce categories. There's and during your initial import, you have to do a CSV import on the item records, and you also have to do them on the commerce category records. There is a way around this with one of our solutions that allows you to select the commerce category directly from the item record. And with that solution, you'd be able to do a CSV import of your commerce categories, uh, the selection of the items on your commerce categories, just with the item record CSV import. So ask your project manager about that and we can tell you a little bit more about how that solution works, but it is a, a separate add-on solution. But I do want to bring it up because it makes life a lot easier when you're managing large amounts of e-commerce data. Now, finally, we're going to go ahead and just delete this from the website for a second, just so you can see it. We're going to say, don't display on website. We're in electronics, it does page not found as a result. So you'll always have to be careful. And you'll notice the commerce category up here, that level one commerce category no longer shows up in the navigation. We're going to add this back in, and it will show up in the navigation. And I want to show you why it's doing that and, and why it has that ability to add or remove in the navigation without manually adding links in. So we just added it back in. It dynamically adds the category back in based on its sequence location. But we need to go to the configuration record, the layout navigation section, and I'll show you why it's doing that dynamically. So we're going to go to commerce and configuration, select our website, configure. Now we're going to go to layout, we're going to go to navigation. And we can see that there's a, the, home, the home here, which means that there's a home button and the URL that it's going to, the shop button, which is just taking you to the search results page. And this is the key component, this categories placeholder. By having this categories placeholder, what it does is whenever you create a commerce category, it adds it into the navigation bar dynamically. So if I added a new subcategory underneath of laptops and tablets and created it in the ERP, it would automatically add it under here in the header as well. And that is a result of this variable category placeholders. And I can create other things after this categories placeholder or before. So I just have to go here and insert before, or I would have to insert after. So we're going to just do um, saw product. And then we're going to go ahead and, and click into our circular saw. I'm going to copy and paste the URL. And I'm going to put it as a relative URL meaning after the primary domain. All right, I'm just going to add this and click Save. And now it's refreshed. And the configuration is correct here. 
And if we click Solve Product, it'll take us to the product page. So this is not a commerce category, but we can have this dinette. These all are this electronics, outdoor, and tools. And the reason why we can tell that is because the saw product is here in the navigation and shop is over here and these dynamically populated. So let's look over here at the configuration. We see the shop and the saw product and the, everything in between it are the different commerce categories. And that's how your commerce categories automatically populate in the navigation bar if they're displayed yes to display on website and this category placeholder is here in the navigation, it'll dynamically do so.